Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Thomas Fickenship, who is the Regional Director for Australia and New Zealand at CyberArk. CyberArk is specialist in identity security solutions. And Thomas joins us today to discuss the company's recent Threat Landscape 2022 report and how organisations can be prepared to face the security challenges that lie ahead. Thanks for coming along, Thomas, and welcome to the Jam. Thanks, Michelle. Great to be with you. Fantastic. So, um, just to give our audience a brief overview, um, to start off with, who is CyberArk? The very short answer is lead in identity security. Um, so if you ask cybersecurity professionals or like more broadly, IT, the IT community, they would recognize as the lead in identity security. But if I explain a bit further, we came into the market in the late 90s and we had one vision which was secure the most privileged users of any organizations, and they're typically IT system administrators. And we've done that for over 20 years, and we became the leader in that particular space, which is called privilege access management. But we've learned a lot of lessons along the way. We also listed the company, we became a public company, and we basically extended that philosophy across all users who carry identities, because we believe a lot of them are actually privileged in terms of utilization of applications, technology, and assets. So what we do in short, we pretty much defend against attacks. We make the life of threat actors extremely hard and we secure all forms of identities. Sounds like you cover a lot of bases there. That's fantastic. And um, so just kind of going on to the uh, threat report 2022, what are some of the key highlights from that? And um, in particular, can you focus a little bit on the Australian highlights? Yeah. So what we did there, we actually surveyed about 750 um, IT security decision makers um, around the world, and lots of them from Australia and New Zealand as well. And if I look at some of those highlights, is what became quite clear is that over the last 12 months, cybersecurity or security in general became a little bit of a sideshow. And it's, it's understandable because with COVID, people have focused on securing and sustaining their business operations. I mean, even like, you know, moving everyone into home offices and securing remote work and hybrid work was a, a business priority, but also organizations wanted to accelerate their digital initiatives. Um, so cybersecurity was a bit of a backseat. Well, that comes at a cost. Um, the, the, problem, the problem with that, if you, if you do that, you're actually exposing a lot of your users if you don't manage those identities properly. And, and you know, while, while you're doing digital initiatives, there's a growing amount of identities being added um, because you connect devices, you connect everything to the internet. What we also learned is that um, non-human identities through automation technologies, like introducing robotic process automation, have almost outweighed human identities by a factor of 45, and that's globally. If you look at our region, it's about a factor of 11 that indicates that Australian New Zealand is a little bit behind the automation drive. But that was quite astonishing because, you know, a lot of people look at human identities, but no one thinks about, well, there's a lot of bots being introduced and they also carry identities. So there are some of the major findings. And I think what we also found is then some industries in particular were highly attacked, um, like healthcare as an example, utility industries were actually quite exposed to a lot of attacks, in particular ransomware attacks. There were some of those major findings. And then maybe one more point to mention is when you talk about software development, a lot of companies do software development. Pretty much everyone who does digitization does software development. And they also have indicated that they will not be prepared for a attack, for a supply chain attack in, in their software supply chain. So there were some of those major findings. Yeah, and you mentioned a little bit about um, kind of the attack and kind of moving on to the 2022 attack surface. Um, can you explain a little bit about what that means and the growing identities problem that we have? Yeah. So let me start with the growing identities problem because that probably leads to um, the attack surface. So as soon as you start to create more connection points, so you, like, you know, and you, add, you add devices to the internet, um, you outsource your IT infrastructure into public cloud environments. You basically add IoT devices, you know, for example, in distribution and warehousing, you have fully automated uh, warehousing with lots of IoT devices added. You create a lot of connection points, so you're adding you're connecting humans, applications, and business processes. And every one of these connection points carries an identity. So you've got this enormous explosion of identities, this sprawl of identities. And that creates, creates an issue if you leave them unmanaged and not secured. 
So when, when you go to the threat landscape right now, what has happened? I mean, most of those companies surveyed have had a ransomware attack. Some of them multiple ransomware attacks last year. So in healthcare, more than 80% of the companies we talked to had a ransomware attack. If you go to the utility and energy sector, they had these so-called supply chain software attacks because they, they basically have a lot of external suppliers, partners coming in or providing particular software services. And through those external software services, if they are compromised, the actual utility or energy company can get compromised as well. I mean, you're probably familiar with some of the spectacular attacks last year. SolarWinds was one of, one of the attacks. Um, some of those oil pipelines in the US. Um, so that red landscape has grown. And again, it comes back to this growing issues around connectivity and unmanaged identities at every connection point. Absolutely. Lots of change at the moment. Yeah. Um, and the terms um, cybersecurity debt is something we hear quite a bit nowadays. Um, what did the report find in terms of uh, cybersecurity debt? Thinking uh, when, you, when you talk to IT professionals, they always use the term technical debt. And I think cybersecurity debt is a similar one. So what does it mean if, if you don't address a problem and it could be like a technical legacy issue, but in, in our case, a cybersecurity issue, you're building up debt because it's actually incurring future cost. At some point you have to address it. And that's the cost that's building up. So you have to pay down, right? And, and you know, the longer you leave it un, unmanaged and unsecured, the bigger is actually the debt that you have to deal with. So that's the cybersecurity debt that we, we, are, we are talking about. And as I said before, we, we've got, we've got uh, a lot of unmanaged security, uh, unmanaged identities. We have a lot of you know, non-human non identities that need to be addressed. Um, so that's the, the key problem with cybersecurity. That's how we see it today. You've got you to get on top of it because the threat landscape is getting bigger. bigger. Absolutely. And um, just to kind of finish off, how can organizations address all these issues that we've talked about and what can be done? Yeah. I probably want to concentrate on three major points. Um, the first one leads to the area of software development that I mentioned before. Um, I think we need better transparency. We need to understand all the software components that are being used in a supply chain or around an ecosystem of, of organizations that are working together to be able to understand where the threat comes from. So we call it, we call it the software bill of materials. I'll give you a very specific example. I was actually in Adelaide last week and I talked to the Australian Institute for Machine Learning. And there's some pretty bright people there, but we talked about their work in terms of, you know, um, AI and, and machine learning initiatives. And they said one of the biggest problems for these guys is the huge amounts of codes being written for um, autonomous vehicles, for example. And if you don't secure all software elements in that code base, you're going to create a risk down the track. So the services that you launch in terms of digitization, digitization services, they will be, will be unsecure. So you've got to look at that software bill of material and understand how it's being secured. The second one is you've got to have strategies in place to manage um, access, you manage sensitive access. And that's across the entire workforce, not just the most privileged users. You might have users in human resources or in finance or in other departments, and they also have access to sensitive ex, uh, assets and data. So you've got to have uh, strategies in place to manage that. And I think you also need to eliminate any form of embedded credentials that you have sitting in software codes that is hard coded, um, because that can cause an enormous problem down the track. So there are probably some of those elements and they can all be embedded in what we call a zero trust strategy. I mean, a lot of organizations talk about zero trust, authenticate everywhere, make sure you have least privilege. So only the amount of privilege and, and uh, credentials that you need to access certain environments. I think they are probably some of those strategies that we can apply. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for that advice, uh, Thomas, and uh, I'm sure our viewers really appreciate that. Um, and again, we look forward to hearing more from um, CyberArk and more about the threat report in the future. Thank you very much.